Uh, counselor? There's a raccoon stuck in the vending machine. That's so annoying. I wanted a snack. Welcome to Trail Mix, our mini episodes from Camp Counselors Podcast. Each week, the stories come from you, our Camp Shady Birch campers. We want to hear your juicy gossip, top secret confessions, embarrassing and scary stories, and sprinkle in our sage counselor advice. Trail Mix is for the campers. And God, do we love you. Hey, happy campers. Welcome back to Trail Mix. This is our mini episode. You guys already know that. We're going to be reading you listeners submitted emails. Yeah, it's episode nine. Um, we're recording this before Halloween. Obviously, we're batching. Get over you guys. So what did we just do today? We went to... So like, oh my God, I'm a little annoyed. I'm going to be a bitch for a minute. Let me vent, please. Okay. So they have this like famous dog Halloween parade in Tompkins Park in New York every single year. And I've seen it on TikTok. It seemed really exciting, really fun. So that's all I wanted to do today was to go to this like famous dog Halloween costume parade. It sounds like a riot. Everything <laughs> that could have gone wrong just happened. Like the outfit I was wearing was not the right outfit for the day. It was very humid. I was chafing. I was getting sweaty. Every single subway we took was very delayed. And, very delayed. And packed with smelly people. It was like, Dinky. Yeah, we were excited because we were like, oh, we got the new subway car we get on. Absolutely nothing to hold on to. They were like, good luck. There's no seats. There's like nothing on the ceilings. There was like one bar that 17 people were grabbing on. I know. And obviously that like, that's New York. It's not for the week. And I understand that. But we finally get to the park and everyone had gotten there so early that you couldn't see anything unless you were like front row because it's dogs walking in the parade and where the parade spills out into... For like all the costume dogs, you have to have a wristband for participating in the parade. So I couldn't even see the dogs the entire time. When we finally got to see them, they were walking into like a members only section for VIP. And I got to see the butt of their costumes. Yeah, we literally could only see the butts of a few. And it's like nobody's fault but my own for poor planning. But I had a lot of anxiety because I was overstimulated because it was so loud. And there was a thousand people everywhere. And I didn't know where to go. And I was sweating and chafing. And I wanted to cry. And of course, like they're blasting over the speakers. It's like, and we gonna make you lose your mind. And we're like, can we just please get out of this? We were we were trapped on the block. So we went to lunch after I had two Aperol spritzes. And I suddenly feel better. Yeah, because we are recording this on a weekend. Uh, you guys, if you're listening to this when it comes out, it's a Monday. How are we doing? How are we feeling? Is this the first podcast you're listening to? Rise and shine. Wow, that would be an honor. And if we're not, that's okay too. But welcome back to Trail Mix. We have a very exciting show for you today. But before we start the show, Jonathan just cracked open a grape Celsius. This is my first time having grape. Did you see the amount of cat hair that just went in, in there? Wait, why was there so much cat hair in there? I, I put it down on the table and there's dust and cat hair. Okay, I'm going to give it a... Oh my God, there's so much cat hair. Not you exposing Do you our, see it? Not you exposing us for looking like we're dirty. We're not dirty people. No, we're not, but my cat needs a bath. My cat needs tubby time. Okay, here we go. This is a uh, grape rush. Okay, this is Celsius. It's an energy drink. Here we go. I'm going to give it a taste test. My first time ever. I'm really nervous. Oh, that... Oh, it's Tussin. It's not bussin, it's tussin. That tastes like Robitussin. Oh. Do you want to taste it? No, I don't need to. Um, I do. I feel like I'm drinking NyQuil, but I'm allergic to NyQuil, so this is kind of nice for me when I have a hankering for that, for that sweet, sweet flavor of I, Robitussin. I really hate the flavor of grape when it's not a real grape. Yeah, something. It's like, well, it's kind of Concord grape. You ever had a Concord grape? Of course I have. I feel like f fake grape flavor tastes like Concord grapes. I don't know. It's not really my thing. After this episode, should we go to the store and pick up some more grapes so we can freeze them? Guys, we went through an entire bushel of grapes when they were frozen. Yeah. They were so good. Hey, we're rambling. This show isn't about us. This is about the campers. And we have a fantastic show <laughs> lined up for you today. Um, starting off, my first story is about a camper living with invisible illness. Oh, and I've got a shady narcissistic business owner. Oh, wow. And then I have a hot tub girls party gone wrong. And a golf cart incident that will have you rolling. Wow, let's get into it, campers. Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back to the Gossip Dock. Everybody towel off and start telling me your drama. This is the part of the show where you can vent just, I don't know, tea that you've heard, things you want to get off your chest, just something to talk about that you just need to share with the greater camper community. 
Yeah, if you've got some gossip, send it on into us. We'll read it anonymously, we promise. Obviously, always anonymously. So you can go to campcounselorspodcast.com, little writing tab, or email us at campcounselorspod at gmail.com. So um, our camper writes in today. Hi, counselors. I wanted to write in regards to last week's episode about horrific teachers. This was when we started, we had an episode about- Oh, back in the day. Back to school episode, remember? Okay, okay. In September, so- I definitely have a story for you. When I was 16, I started having tremendous pain in my body. I couldn't hold anything more than like one pound and could barely walk for more than 20 feet. I was in high school, which of course meant carrying books and going up and down stairs. I got a note from my doctor that said to make sure I left five minutes early so I could take my time and someone could carry my books. Well, I had a teacher who flat out just told me no. She continued to just tell me no every day. Then told my entire class I was faking this because I want attention. Wait, not the teacher gaslighting with a medical note. Like, that's crazy. I literally was crying myself to sleep every night due to pain. And this teacher was like, eh, fake. I went on a field trip with this teacher to Disneyland where I rented a wheelchair for the park and my friends helped me get around. The teacher left us there and went back to the hotel without myself and one of my friends. She said returning the wheelchair would be too much of a hassle so we could Uber back ourselves. From Disney? We were 17. (gasps) I can't even believe like a teacher would allow that. Yeah, that's crazy. Or the school would allow that. Years later, I went to a rehab program and now I'm in remission. Every time I post anything on socials about my pain awareness or the disorder, she comments about how proud she is of me for overcoming everything. Shut up. Guilt much? I want to end this with just an ask that you guys mention the awareness of invisible illness and chronic pain as a whole. I have complex regional pain syndrome, which is deemed the most painful disorder you can live with. And this is just one example of times that people accuse me of faking. Love you guys so much and are thankful for you getting me through my drive to work every Wednesday. Kisses from the pain faker in cabin three. I cannot believe that teacher is commenting on Facebook. That is so nuts to me. Not her gaslighting her her entire life at school and then later in life being like, you are so brave. So brave, so strong. Like, yeah, she probably does feel like shit, but Jesus. Yeah, I can't believe she would leave them at Disneyland to get an Uber back as a minor. 17. Unbelievable. Well, guys, invisible pain is real. You know what I mean? Just because you can't see an illness doesn't mean it's not valid. So um, just a nice awareness to always keep that in mind because sometimes we don't know. Right, and then of course, if like she has to explain, of course she's gonna have to explain herself to people which nobody should have to do and then they go oh well i haven't really heard of that and then the the people think that she's faking it's like just shut the fuck up like you think she wants to be in this position no i blame gray's anatomy whipples we all all think that we have a medical degree when we don't okay Mm. meredith gray did not take us to medical school we don't know what we're talking about so when someone says they have something going on we have to take their word for it especially a teacher to a minor it's just so bizarre not having a doctor's known her not letting her do it like what is going on in that teacher and here here's the thing we love teachers we've said it here before and we'll say it again because most of our listeners are teachers i've had so many wonderful teachers in my life i feel like i just have to preface with that because i'm not smashing all teachers but i'm gonna bash on this one like what a shitty awful teacher yeah well we've all had them it's okay are we qualified to be giving advice? No. Are we going to do it anyway? Absolutely. Welcome back to Dear Counselors. We're going to give you some advice. It's up to you if you want to take it or not. Don't know if it's going to be good, but I think it's great advice. I would take it. We always give good advice. Don't even say that. We always give the best You're we right. can. You know what? Take this advice. I would take it all night long. Okay, here we go. Dear Counselors, I'm writing to get some advice on something that's been bothering me for the past couple of weeks. I work for a small business and I've been there for well over five years. I love my job, but my manager, who is also the owner of the company, is not a great person. She's a micromanager, she's mean, and honestly, she's completely narcissistic. To my surprise, a couple of months ago, my boss sat me down and asked if I would be willing to buy the company from her in a couple of years. I thought to myself, oh my God, this is perfect. I could keep doing this job that I love and be my own boss. I told her that for sure I was interested, but I would obviously have to talk to my husband about it as it would change both of our lives. When I got home from work, I told my husband and he was 100% on board. I'll just say he wasn't happy where he was working and he was open to a change. 
I went into work the very next day and told my boss that my husband was down with the idea and I was very interested. She was so happy and relieved. Fast forward a couple of months and we had lost a couple of staff members and it's virtually impossible to find help. Most likely because this business has a bad reputation in town with past employees, but not because of me. LOL. My boss goes on vacation, leaving me in charge, so I go into the office to check emails and make sure no customer questions have come through or anything like that. And that's when I see it. An email that had been open on the screen. Naturally, I read it. Who wouldn't? I absolutely would. It was from another local store owner who was talking about buying the very business that was offered to me. I scroll to see that my boss had been sending this woman all these financial documents and business details. I scrolled the email thread some more to find that my boss had reached out to this woman first. After reading that email, I googled the business and noticed it was listed for sale. Am I crazy for being offended? Should I tell my boss that this is fucked up? I'm mainly upset because I thought she would have at least said, hey, I still want to sell to you, but I want to sell sooner than we talked. But she didn't do this. She was sneaky about it. Should I confront her? Should I quit? I have no idea what to do. I'm also a shy person who's never stood up for myself my entire life. Help. Signed, feeling betrayed by the bitch in cabin six. Ooh, I love the way you wrote off on that. Betrayed by the bitch in cabin six. Yeah. So um, do you have thoughts or do you want me to... Um, I have thoughts. Okay. I would say, listen, you can, it's business. Okay. I think what she's doing is shady, but this is business and it's not personal, it's business. So if I was you, what I would do would be to confront her immediately because you're not in the wrong here because she left you to manage the place while she was gone. So to say that you saw an email, is not inappropriate because obviously that was your position in that week. And to be like, Hey, like, um, just, you know, I, I saw this come up and I, I know we talked about it previously and I'm sure there's other people out here that want to take over, but, um, I feel like I've worked with you. I know you really well and I'm comfortable taking over whenever you are. And I'm still very, very seriously interested and just want to make sure you know that when it comes time to sell the business. When it comes down to the brass tacks. Yeah. Like it's, it, this woman probably built the business. So she's just trying to make sure that she's, um, taken care of. You know what I mean? It's not, this is not personal. This is business. Right. So don't take it overly personal. I just want to look out for you and your best interest. If this is what you want, then stand up and fight for it. Don't let your emotions take over in a way that can stop you from getting what you want. Okay. That's not what I thought you were going to say, but that's a good point of view. I think she's a bitch. I do. I think like it was bitchy to go around twice, but like, let's move on and look at the big picture here. Like one day she's going to be gone. And like, I want to make sure that you get what you need. Well, one, if she was hiding this from you, like, is she hiding anything else about the business from you? I think she's putting out feelers because she wants multiple offers. Okay. And that's fine. That's valid. Two, you said that um, that this place has kind of a bad reputation on the street to begin with. Is that something that you want to, like, take on and be the owner of? Is something that already has, like, a bad reputation? What kind of business do you think it is? I don't know. I think it's an accountant. You think? Because they sell their businesses when they retire because they have all those like clients and all that bookkeeping. So I know someone that sold their accounting business. I'm going with accountant. I am. And I think if that's what it is, then you have a long roster of people that she brought on. So that's why she gets the rights to sell that. Okay. So fair, because that would also make sense why it's really just kind of hard to hire people and not hard to get clients. She didn't say it wasn't hard to get clients, but that's just kind of my assumption from how I was reading this. So that's fair. So yeah, I guess I'll, I'll agree with you. It's like, if this is really what you want, Yeah. It's business. If this is really what you want, don't let the emotions of what's happening right now cloud your better judgment. Move on, but also stand up and say, hey, this is what I want. But you can you can want to work there and still think she's a bitch for doing that because it is bitchy. Yeah. But I think in her mind, business is business. Business is business. So let us know. We obviously want what's best for you. Good luck to you and your future endeavors. Scary stories around the campfire. Welcome back to scary stories around the campfire campers. We have two this week. We always have a lot of scary stories. We have a ton of scary stories. I think a lot of times we're like trying to figure out what category some of these stories go into and we're not sure and they always kind of naturally lead to scary stories. Yeah, you guys have a lot of embarrassing stories out there. This one's not embarrassing. It kind of is scary. It's just a good story and like I don't know where else we'd put it. So I'm just going to read it. Howdy, my favorite kooky, crazy camp counselors. So this is a long one. So buckle in. So the year was 2017. It was my sophomore year of college and I went to a school 
in a pretty rural ski mountain town in New Hampshire. It was about to be the end of the semester right before winter break, and one of my best friends, who I will call Tati, was planning on studying abroad in January and needed help moving out of her dorm. My other best friend and roommate at the time, who I will call Britt, and I offered to help Tati move out of her dorm. Tati also had her mother come up from Mystic, Connecticut for the weekend. We love Mystic. I know we do. It's kind of a long drive from Mystic to our school, so her mom rented a cute, quaint B&B to stay in and offered us to come back with her after helping Tati move out so we could swim in the hot tub and hang out. Honest, yeah, Tati's mom sounds really cool. She's like, come girls, chill in the hot tub. Thanks for helping my daughter move. All right, so Tati's mom is super cool and fun. We, of course, took her up on the offer and came back with her to this B&B. It wasn't far from our school, just like 15-minute drive, but we would never noticed it before. We walked into the B&B, and it was super quiet. We noticed we were the only car in the parking lot, and Tati's mom was the only guest staying. The B&B was very cute and rustic. We also noticed that there was no one working there to greet us, which was a little odd, but didn't think much of it. Tati's mom showed us to her room on the third floor, and on the way up, we noticed these other vacant rooms were left open, and they had bathrobes hanging on the doors. After showing us her room, Tati's mom suggested we get into the robes and have a little girl party and drink wine in the outdoor hot tub. We, of course, all wanted to have a bathrobe to fit the occasion and noticed that there was only three robes, but four of us ladies. I decided I would grab one of the extra hanging bathrobes that were on one of the vacant room doors. We make our way down to the common area and notice there was complimentary wine. At the time, Tati, Britt, and I were only like 19 or 20. We poured ourselves some glasses and made our way into the hot tub. Finding free alcohol when you're that old is like the best. It's like, okay, I'm going to drink. I'm in college. I'm going to freaking drink in the hot tub. Come on. And it's complimentary. Also, hey, you got to be careful drinking in a hot tub. Nobody warns me the first time I drank in a hot tub. Yeah, you get really drunk fast because of the temperature, right? Yeah, one yingling and I was like dunzo. I don't think I have much experience drinking in hot tubs, I guess. Oh, I know what we're doing this summer. All right. We were enjoying our time laughing, giggling, popping our bussies, taking... <laughs> Pics and <laughs> she say she that? said that popping her oh my God. taking pics and just vibing when a man walks out onto the patio we hadn't seen him before but he was a worker i assume like owner slash manager we never really found out he comes out of nowhere and says you people can't leave this door open we apologized and explained that it was an accident he then noticed we were holding wine glasses in the hot tub at the time we didn't really think they could break we were really just having a cottage core moment and he aggressively <laughs> said, really? And now you're going to bring glass into the hot tub? Which, not that he should have yelled, but I do understand why people do freak out. Like, you can't have glass in any, like, pool or hot tub. But he's, like, getting, like, really aggressive. Yeah, it's like, these are guests. You can always just be like, hi, oh, we're just going to keep this door closed. How are you ladies doing? Do you need anything? Are you enjoying your time here? Has the complimentary wine. By the way, we have these sturdy plastic glasses I'd be more than happy to put your wine into just, you know, for everybody's safety. That's how I would have handled it. Yeah, honestly, the way you handled that was very professional and, like, the way it should have been handled. So good job, babe. You should own a B&B. You know what? You guys new business venture well the camper continues at this point we were extremely uncomfortable and apologized again he walked back inside and at this point all of us girlies are like okay this is getting to be a lot let's just get out of the hot tub i get it. like the vibes are off now like now i feel weird like i'm leaving i picture him as that super gay um guy from sweet life is Zack and cody do you remember him no he was also on that so raven as like the talent scout for the musical episode and every day patrick his name was and every time you see him you're like oh that guy i'm gonna show you a picture and you're gonna be like oh that guy i think he sounds straight <laughs> to me in the story oh maybe well we don't know in this one but we'll continue on we step back inside and he's just staying there looking angrier and angrier he then asked tati's mom you can't just bring random guests here and who do you think you are to which tati's mom replied these aren't random girls this is my daughter and her friends i didn't think it'd be an issue since i'm paying to stay here call off tati's mom <laughs> at this point we were quickly walking up the stairs to the room to change and the man continues to follow us and asks aren't these girls even 21 i'm calling the police Tati's mom replies, actually, yes, they're all 21. Sir, go ahead. Call the cops. We weren't 21, but go off Miss Tati. <laughs> Not calling the cops. Like, what are you going to do? We then lock the door to the room and are all rushing to change out of our bathing suits and look at each other like, what the fuck just happened? And are quickly trying to figure out what to do. Tati's mom says we're leaving because she doesn't feel safe staying there anymore. 
rightfully so. This man then proceeds to bang on our room door and says, and you took the robe from another room? <laughs> Are you serious? Not the robe. Oh, no. By that point, if I was the camper who wrote this, then I'd be like, oh, shit. Like, of course he's going to yell about the robe. The camper goes, I felt so bad in this moment because I was the one to take <laughs> yeah. the robe. But I didn't think it'd be an issue. All of us were petrified at this point, especially since we're the only people in this B&B. We then quickly gather our things and try to rush out of this place, but this man continues to fall behind us and threaten us. As we're leaving, this man has his fists clenched as if he was going to punch one of us, and we are now running to the car. Tati was the one driving, and we were all like, floor it because he's still following us. Tati quickly reversed the car and ran over a pretty big boulder in her little Prius <laughs> that we literally thought caused a flat tire for a second, but thank God we made it out by the grace of God and flew out of that place. We were all so traumatized and told Tati's mom to come stay at mine and Britt's apartment. We were convinced if she stayed the night there after that encounter, she would have been murdered. This man was on some true feral behavior. Tati's mom just decided to drive back that night to Mystic. We felt so bad since she'd already had a long day of driving, but thankfully we all made it out safely and honestly laughed about it. After we decided to leave a bad Yelp review of the place. Mm, I was I, just going to ask. I kind of deleted what they wrote, but they left like something they <laughs> crazy. What did they say? They just are like, they, okay, I'll just say it then. They're like, this place has bed bugs. <laughs> oh, they said it and it didn't? <laughs> they did. oh. Yeah, they really took apart, but also it's like, Hey, this is not my story. Yeah, this I'm is not, not our story. I'm not judging here, okay? Yeah. But they really went hard on the Yelp review. Oh, God. So, <laughs> so long story short, remember, ladies, don't trust an empty B&B in the middle of a ski mountain. Nowhere. Love Camper and Cabin 5 drinking red wine in the hot tub with her favorite bathrobe. Wink. <laughs> XOXO. That. Not the manager just like yelling it for no reason to their only guests for that night. I was already so uncomfortable reading this, but the best part is when he's banging on the door and he's like, you, you took, took the, the bathrobe too. too. And she's like, damn. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It couldn't get much. But the bathrobe, that part's now he's just pissed about nothing. It's like, lello. Yeah, just wash it. Like, come on now. You're running a B&B. This is the whole kind of gig. Yeah, you, you think know? word on word on the street is going to be good for you right now? No, it's no, not. It's Check not. your Yelp review. We did. It's not good on Yelp either. But um, Camper, I'm glad you survived. And I feel really bad for Tati's mom. Missed the Connecticut to northern New Hampshire and back. That's not That's rough. a trip for the week. That is rough, especially after like a whole day. She drove there that day, moved, and then moved back. I know. Ugh. All right. So I'll read my story now. Hi, counselors. Gather around the campfire and get cozy because it's chilly out, babes. Let's get into my scary story. I love that. Me too. She's just taking full control. Okay. This all started when I was in sixth grade. Peak awkward. When I was a little girl, like Jonathan, I was new in town. All I wanted to do was fit in and make friends. I was obviously overjoyed when I was invited to Brittany's birthday party. Brittany was so cool and so were her friends. A bunch of us girls gathered at her family's cabin where we could enjoy some boating and some good old northern Michigan fun. It was a bright and sunny Saturday afternoon and Brittany's dad had a boat ride planned for all of us. So a handful of us girls loaded up on the golf cart in our bathing suits. I love getting on a golf cart. Like a friend who has a golf cart just exudes wealth. Like I've known one person that grew up with that had a golf cart and it's if you live in a lake... You have money. Yeah, or you like have a mountain house and it's like we're whipping and dipping through the streets like we did at Friendsgiving last year with Sam. Yeah, and like I'm not upset. Like everyone wants to aspire to have a golf cart at their house. So it's kind of fun. And it's like I'm driving and then you hit the speed bumps and it's like, oh, I just fuck. I don't know if golf carts have mufflers, but I fucked it up. I don't think golf carts have mufflers, but they should. <laughs> I don't even know what a muffler does. Keeps you warm in the winter. Anyway, okay, where was I? Uh, Brittany was cool and her friends. Okay, okay. It's important to note that I was wrapped up in my beach towel as well. You know, classic, casual, cute body image issues had me feeling like I needed to cover up. Listen, I get it. Preaching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> Little did I know how badly that towel would betray me. There wasn't a ton of room on the golf cart, so I decided to take one for the team and stand in <laughs> stand in the back while we drove down the woody trails to get on the boat. Okay, just like you guys close your eyes unless you're driving right now and just really like visualize this. We were all having a lovely time feeling the wind in our hair and giggling while the golf cart was cruising along when all of a sudden my towel dropped and got caught in the wheel of the golf cart taking me down with it. So she's in the back 
And this gets wrapped around the wheel and the cart's still going and it's taken her down off the golf cart. Now I bet you're wondering, did it hurt to fall off the golf cart? No, because I didn't fall off. For some mysterious, stupid, silly reason I still don't understand, I decided it was a good idea to hold on to the golf cart while it was still driving full speed. So she's still like two hands on this thing, like dragging on her stomach while this thing is driving at full speed. Unbelievable being dragged on a golf cart. Maybe I was just afraid of being left behind. I don't know. Either way, I was being dragged behind the golf cart in the dirt for what feels like an eternity, my body just flailing and bumping around on the rough terrain of the wooded trail, hanging onto the golf cart when one girl finally yelled for Brittany's dad to stop driving. I was completely covered in dirt, but somehow I was not hurt. My ego was, though. I'm surprised she didn't, like, (laughs) crack a rib. I know. Well, she probably had, like, road rash, and she was just playing it off. Yeah, she's like, don't worry, I'm, these are my new friends. Like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, she's Honestly, like, <laughs> she's just vibing. Like, she's happy to be there. And, like, I appreciate that energy because, like, I would have cried and went home. She's, like, flailing around literally like a fish on the... Do you remember the opening scene to Good Burger? I don't know if you ever saw no. it. So, like, this... He's, like, roller skating through a double dutch and, like, hits this girl who's being dragged by her back. And she's clearly, like, the actress is, like, laying on a skateboard and she's, like, hitting her head on the asphalt. Like, I can see her being that girl and then jumping up and being like that was so crazy guys right like remember when that happened like i'm cool though i'm fine they're anyway like, let's get on the raft they're like are you good she's like totally like let's just have fun she's like hemorrhaging <laughs> hematoma oh, i don't know what that means okay so i did my best to laugh it off <laughs> queen queen behavior we arrived at the water i rinsed off and we all boarded the boat. She had to. She's like, I'll be in one second, guys. I'm just going to test the water. I'm going to dip a toe. She's like bleeding out. She's like, I'm having a real good time with my friend Brittany. It's her birthday in Michigan. <laughs> uh, I thought the worst was behind me. The boat was cruising along and I was sitting on the bow. Is that That's the front? I think it's the front, yeah. I'm laughing with all my new friends. I look down and realize my full boob is out. <laughs> just glaringly out. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been out. <laughs> I quickly put I quickly put my boob away and I act like nothing happened. This poor girl. Like, <laughs> the parents are like, who is this bitch you brought? She's being dragged by a golf cart. Her tits are out on the ball. No. She's like that's road like, rash all over her. Oh her, her God. Chest. Okay. <sighs> I acted like nothing happened. Of course. What else can she do? She's just fighting for her life on this birthday trip. (laughs) Happy birthday, Brittany. (laughs) 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 Can you picture her like arm on the bow and she's like looking out into the sunset, the winds in her hair and she's like just vibing with her friends laughing and then she's like, wait, my fucking tits out. (laughs) And it's like, how long has it been out? You never know. It's giving Terry on the red carpet with the flashballs. You just didn't know. (sighs) Tara Reed. Okay. All of the girls definitely saw it and had some giggles about it. The worst part was that Brittany's dad totally saw it and he looked away really quickly. Yeah, because he's like, this is my child's child's friend and her dad's out. Yeah, he's just doing his best. He's like, well, I almost literally, this girl almost already died. Like, let's just give her a break here. (laughs) That's probably why it happened because she her whole body is numb from the neck down after being dragged on a golf <laughs> cart. Back to back embarrassment. There's something about being dragged behind a golf cart in the mud and then immediately having a nip slip that really kills your vibe. Luckily, I laughed it off and really leaned into the hilarity of it all. And I made some great friends that weekend. Anyway, I think this experience has taught me that if you can learn to laugh at yourself, life is a lot easier. You might just get some friends in the process. I love you both, and I love this podcast, and I'm so excited to continue to follow your journey. Love, Nip Slipping in Cabin 16. It's so funny. Like, I'm so glad that she chose to just be positive about it, because for us, it's a hysterical like a story, and I'm glad that... Because if she would have been, like, upset about being dragged on the golf the golf cart, like, she could have went home. Yeah. But she was like, no, I'm going to keep hanging out with my girls. Nipple out. No, I'm going to keep hanging out with my girls. And now they're all friends. Like, it's like she just, like, kept rolling with the punches. She was like, hey, life's hard. Also, shout out to the friends who were like, hey, this girl's crazy. We really fuck with her. Like, yeah. they could have been like, she's the new weird girl. 
And they were. I wonder if they're still friends because this was sixth grade. I really hope they're still friends. Me too. But I just can't get over the fact that she was hanging on to the golf cart, being dragged stomach down, like hitting <laughs> roots and rocks and leaves. Gravel. The, there's no suspension in a golf cart. Okay. She was like really, he, like, I don't know. That's and insane. 15 miles per hour is pretty fast when you're dangling on the back, being oh. literally raked across the coals. Jeez. Well, Camper, thanks for writing that in. That was hysterical. That I love gave that. me a good, that was like one of the funnier stories we've read in a long time. Give me a really good chuckle. I loved it. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. If you want us to read your story, you can write into uh, what is our website? Campcounselorspodcast.com, mm -hmm. I believe, or camp campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Why am I struggling right now? It's not even Monday for us. Yes, yes. Write us in so we can read your stories on the show. We'll see you Wednesday. We'll see you Monday. We'll see you whenever you catch us. We love you so much. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.